my name is Nati Cohen. Uh, I'm currently a production engineer at SimilarWeb, and I am working on my thesis at IDC at Celia. I'm a co-organizer of the Opstock Meetup Group and the Statsraft Conference. And as a shameless plug, uh, we are looking for speakers, both for the Meetup Group and for the Statsraft 2016. I want to tell you a story. Uh, and the story starts with me getting a task. So they come to me and say, we need you to read some application configuration file and do stuff with it. Uh, at that point, I stopped and thought to myself, wow, this is too easy, right? Uh, I'm working with Python. Uh, reading a configuration file is like two lines of code. Uh, and doing stuff with it is as simple as doing any other stuff in Python. But then they told me, wait, there's more. Uh, this configuration file is not really a any file, and it's not a JSON, and it's not really an XML. It might look familiar on first uh, sight, uh, but it's something we invented here. Uh, and you can't really use the existing code because it's all over our monolith uh, code. And then I said, OK, is there, is there anything more you want to tell me? And then they said, yes. This configuration file uh, have a DSL embedded in it. And this DSL has data types, uh, strings, numerals, arrays, and maps. And it references other parts of the configuration file. And it has methods on these data types to manipulate them and to fetch values from remote key value stores. Uh, it is nested, and it is recursive. Then I thought, oh no. <laughs> After a short while, I remembered I'm a developer, and I know regular expressions, right? For those of you who for some reason, missed regular expression and still sitting in the crowd. Regular expression is the superpower of the developer, right? It allows you to do pattern matching and with it uh, to do validation, string replacement, and some sort of parsing. And if the problem was simpler and I would have an ini file, which would look like a normal ini file sections and keys and values. Uh, then I could use my uh, loved regular expressions, uh, match the sections and do stuff, and match the keys and the values and do stuff. But it wasn't. And then I thought, can I use it? And if you go to the internet and look for, can I use regular expression to do this or to do that, some people might tell you, you can't use regular expression to do this, because regular expression used to, uh, reg used to do stuff with regular languages. You, if you haven't learned like linguistics or uh, CS theory, uh, you might be confused. So here is like the uh, shortest explanation of what regular languages are. So for engineers, regular languages are languages that you can validate that a word is a part of the language in O1 space. Uh, you don't need like a large amount of space to say if a word is a part of the language or not. And in formal, uh, we say that uh, a language is regular if it can be, all the words can be recognized by a finite automaton or a regular expression. Uh, and a quick example is the language composed of uh, keys and values in an any file is a regular language. Uh, because I can write a regular, exp a regular expression to verify that. And I can create a finite automaton uh, uh, to verify that either. A language made of keys and values where the key is equal to the value uh, is not a regular language. Some intuition to that is that once you get to the equal sign, you need to remember the key. Uh, otherwise, you can't really tell if the uh, second part is matching, right? So you need some space, uh, which is not constant. You're looking at it, and if you know regular expressions, you know, like, but this is wrong. I can use regular expression to match this language. Uh, I can use uh, backtracking, uh, which is a feature existing even in the uh, RE module in the standard library. And you will be correct. Because uh, modern regular expressions used by engineers are far more than the regular expressions in computer theory or in linguistics. And you can do a lot more than just match words uh, or languages 
which are regular. You can have even more uh, cool stuff to do with regular expressions if you import the regex module, but this is a completely different talk. So the next question I ask myself is, should I use regular expressions, right? Uh, because people often face with a problem and then uh, they decide to use regular expression and then something like this comes up, might validate that an email address is uh, uh, conforms with the RFC, uh, but is not maintainable or readable in any way, and you can only look at it and say, what? My process was to start writing some code and then uh, ask myself uh, several questions I used to ask myself when I write regular expressions. So the first uh, test you can do if you want to know if you should use regular expressions is the coffee test. Right? You write a regular expression and you go drink a coffee. And then you come back to your uh, machine and look at that regular expression. And if you can tell what it does, then you can keep it. Uh, and I say you should do the iterative uh, coffee test, which means that uh, even after every change to your code, because you will find bugs and you will want to add some new feature to your regular expressions, after each change, go drink that coffee again and come and uh, look at your code. Because like the previous regular expression uh, wasn't built in a day. And make your regular expressions readable. Uh, use the verbose function. Uh, you can add like new lines and uh, white spaces to your regular expression. You can use comments. You can use named groups. Uh, all these things help you uh, and help others read your regular expressions. The second thing you should note is how much code you have to write around your regular expression in order to use it. If you, like a common pattern I find myself uh, do and then uh, regret immediately, uh, is having a bunch of regular expressions apply to some string over and over and over again in a loop. And once you get this bad sign, and once I got this bad sign when I tried to parse this DSL, uh, I started thinking about better alternatives. And the, thir and the first better alternative comes to mind is language parsers, right? And so I went to find my uh, language parser to use. For those of you who haven't met language parsers or just heard about it in some theory class or are afraid of it for some reason, let's define uh, what a language parser is. So a language parser is just some sort of function that take your data, uh, be it a string, and a grammar, which is a set of rules that define your language, and returns a tree. An example to uh, such grammar, such set of rules, uh, uh, we can look at these rules for the ini file. An ini file is a set of sections, and the section have a name, and it have some keys and values. And each key and value is uh, two strings uh, separated by an equal sign, right? And this is a grammar. This is how a grammar looks. And the tree that it emits uh, for this type of grammar and the ini file we saw before is this tree. We have the ini file at the root, and then the sections, and then the keys and the values. One more thing you should know about uh, grammars and language parsers before you uh, start looking through a pipey, the issue of grammar ambiguity. When you design a grammar, uh, you need to be uh, careful about one thing, and you want to avoid grammar ambiguity. For example, for this uh, C code, uh, you can parse it, if you had like uh, this grammar, you can parse it one way as uh, defining a, declaring a pointer, right, uh, for type A. And you can also create a tree for uh, an expression of multiplication. You don't want your grammar to be ambiguous because then you're just deferring the decision of which tree to take uh, to the parser or worse, uh, in runtime, uh, when it will hit some ambiguous input, uh, it will emit an exception and you will have to go back to your drawing board and redesign uh, your grammar. So you want to avoid uh, grammar ambiguity. What considerations did I have when looking for uh, this language parser? Uh, so first and foremost, I need uh, the grammar to be expressive enough uh, so uh, I can use it against my DSL. And there are like different types of grammars and you need to choose one that cover your uh, language. And like the most important thing for me was quick start, 
right? I didn't want to learn like uh, a lot of documentation in order to just write my hello world parser. And I didn't want to uh, write a lot of boilerplate code in order to use it. Uh, one thing I wasn't so concerned about is complexity because I kind of ran my uh, code in offline and I had all the resources I wanted and all the time in the world. Um, so complexity wasn't a big issue for me, but it might be for you. The first uh, library, or the first module I looked at was PyParsing. It's been out there for a very long time, and it has an O'Reilly ebook, so it must be good. Once I looked at like the uh, any file example of PyParsing, I immediately understood that I want I don't want to do that. A lot, a lot, a lot of boiler code or boilerplate code just to define a grammar. And it's not really uh, readable, at least for a newbie uh, like me. And I knew one, I was looking for something uh, simpler. I found uh, Parsimonious, uh, which is a peg parser uh, written by Eric Rose. And I'm not going to go into uh, linguistics or CS theory, but uh, peg parsers are special types of uh, parsers uh, where you can't have grammar ambiguity. Uh, the, actually, you can define a grammar with ambiguity, which is awesome. And Eric Rose used it to uh, parse MediaWiki, which uh, was parsed by a bunch of uh, regexes in a huge PHP file. You should go see his talk, Parsing Horrible Things, at PyCon 2012. Uh, where he also compares his um, experience with other uh, existing parsers uh, to use with MediaWiki. And the thing I liked most uh, about Parsimonious was that it's really, really easy to use. And how easy to use, you might ask? Two lines of code. All you have to do is give it a huge chunk of text, which is your set of rules, your grammar, and your data, and it emits a tree. That simple. And the grammar is also pretty simple. Uh, you can, again, write it as a text. A file is a bunch of sections, and a section is text and keys and values. And key values are a set of keys and values, and each key value is text equal text. And you can use regular expressions inside your grammar. And for example, text here is defined by a regular expression. This is pretty easy to write. Once you get a hold of it, like you get, got a hold of regular expressions, uh, you have a really strong tool at hand. Because if we return to the two lines we've seen before, now that we have the grammar, uh, these two lines are essentially a validator. We can take any configuration file and say if it's valid, using the grammar and two lines of code, which is awesome, right? But what if you want to do more? What if you want to derive uh, some values of some DSL? Then you still have the tree, right? And this is how the tree uh, looks like uh, for a more, even more simplified version of uh, the ini file. And in order to traverse this tree, uh, parsimonious allow you uh, to inherit uh, a class called node visitor. Using this node visitor, you have a depth-first search traversal over the tree. You can create a function for each uh, rule, and it will be called once the traversal get to that uh, rule. For example, for our tree defining an ini file, uh, at the bottom, if you remember, we had like these text objects. Uh, so uh, at, at the text, we just emit the text. And when we get to a key value, then we have two texts, right? So we want to have them as a tuple. And then when we get to the key values, then we want to take all these tuples of keys and values and make a dict out of them. Uh, we can uh, repeat that. Uh, when we get to the section, we have the section name and a dict of key values, and we create a tuple from them. And when, when we get to the file, we can do that again and smoosh these tuples together for one big happy dict. Uh, some common pitfalls that you might hit uh, on your very first grammar. Uh, so you would want to avoid circular definitions. An example to a circular definition is here on the screen. A goes to B, B, uh, C, and C is A, and then you have a loop when you try to um, to express A. Peg parser help you in some way by limiting your ability to do uh, some types of recursions, uh, but I want to go into much detail about that. 
Another common pitfall for beginners is that the exceptions you might get uh, tend to be a little vague. Uh, so for me, designing my first grammar, uh, it was very difficult to tell if the problem is in the input or in my grammar. One last thing is the node visited documentation. So the readme sends you to the doc string, and the doc string sends you to the AST documentation in the standard library, and the AST uh, node visitor documentation in the standard library is lacking uh, in itself. Instead of trying to follow this dead end of documentation, try to go and just look at examples. Even with all those common pitfalls, uh, it's still better than this, right? Uh, regular expressions are far more than just uh, regular languages. And you shouldn't fear the parser. You can use, there are easy to use parser out there. Parsimonious is just one example. And once you master parsers, uh, you have two hammers uh, to use and not just the regular expression hammer. So the question was, uh, why would you ever need uh, something like uh, a language parser if you usually encounter a regular type of configuration file or outputs? This is what you would hope as a developer to only encounter like standard configuration files and standard API APIs, uh, but this is usually not the case, uh, sadly. Uh, you sometimes hit uh, some you know, new applications designed with new configuration files or uh, some new type of output, or you encounter some people with uh, acute NIH syndrome. So the question was uh, about some ancient file format if it, and if parsers can help to parse them. Uh, so uh, I would love to take a look at your uh, ancient file format uh, and uh, try to fit a grammar for it. Uh, it sounds like a challenging task. So the question was, was this, uh, mod is this module limited only to text and if it can be used for binary? Um, so I've only tried using parsimonious on uh, binary stuff, on textual stuff, I'm sorry. And I know there are really good uh, other libraries for binary. Um, I don't remember them at the moment, but I can go over my records and <laughs> try to find them for you. Thank you. <laughs>